this is still the last day of the conference. Uh, this, this is the Influencer Conference 2010, and we're having a great time. I'm sitting here with Mr. Nathan H. William, very powerful figure, very much an influencer in what you do. And Thank so, you. if you would just please, I mean, you were just on the panel and you said some fascinating things, but we want to get you to introduce yourself and tell us why you're here. I am Nathan Hill Williams. I am a TV and film producer, and I always say a recovering lawyer. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm here because I think that I have pushed my brand um, in a way that was probably um, had never been done before in terms of being black and being gay and being out and open in a way that um, kind of changed people's perceptions, changing people's perceptions of what it means to be black and gay. Um, and so, and then my, my projects do the same thing for not just for black gay people, but also for black women and black men, and just changing the perception of African Americans and African American LGBT people in our society. Fantastic. And the panel that you were just on was called? The panel I was on, I, I, I might get the title incorrect, but it was Sex, Sexual Orientation, Race and Gender, gender and Where That Intersects with Influencer Marketing. Okay. Was there anything in particular that you kind of took away from it or that you wished had been discussed on it? I mean, was there something that needed to be... Well, you know, I, this today is the first time I ever really even consciously thought about, you know, marketing and brand because that's not my background. My background is a creative background or a legal background. Um, I actually learned a lot in the the, the panel. I thought about things in my, in terms of my brand um, that I had not thought about before. Um, one of the things that I think is important is that. You know, we are as a society becoming a lot more global, and there is no niche marketing is almost non-existent now because you can't really you can't really target uh, the gay people, you can't really target the black people because we're not a monolithic group of people exactly. anymore. Um, and we, you know, I was one of the points that I made on the panel was I don't know anything about hip hop. Um, you know, yeah. I, I grew up on Rachmaninoff and Whitney <laughs> Houston and Anita Baker and you know singers like that, and I, I made the joke that you know I n didn't know what a Nicki Minaj was until two weeks ago. And we tweeted that. Yeah. It was hysterical. <laughs> right. I, for me, it was three months ago. So right. <laughs> so you can't, and, and you know, and then if you look at me, you think that I'm in my 20s, and I'm not. Um, oh, and really? Yeah, I'm in my mid 30s. And wow. so, you know, and so <laughs> you can't judge communities by one person or by, you know, traditional thinking about that community. And so I think that that's one of the biggest things that I think we got across today is that marketing and being an influencer means that you have to have a cross section um, of, of people um, and you have to have a cross section of knowledge so you can relate to um, a, a diverse a diverse community. Right. Well, that's an interesting point then because you come from an industry, or you're in an industry right now, that actually segments everything. I mean, they speak in terms of demographics. I mean, in old media, it's just, they still are kind of stuck in that, you know, what target market are you reaching? Is it black? Are they 30? Are they, how do you combat that, being an influencer? You do have to go in there and say, no, no, no. Well, you you know, especially in filmmaking, um, it, it is, is this an urban film, which I hate that title, because making, it just makes it such a horrible assumption that if you're black, you live in an urban area. Um, and yet that's not true. Um, and so, especially in film, you know, they it's only, I think, 10 black films came out last year, you know, into multiplexes. Um, you have to almost show them. Right. You know, you have to go show them that right. it can be done. Like, you take a movie like Precious. Yeah. And I remember when Lee Daniels was, you know, trying mm -hmm. to get that off the ground. And mm -hmm. everyone was saying, that's not going to work. I even had an iteration of the script that I sent to one of my investors. And she right. said her coverage person wanted to split her wrist. No one got it. Right. And he had to go find the money, these, you know, those right. angel yeah. investors. Right do the movie and show them that there is an audience for this and you're st we're still, still having to do still that. having to do that even after he's, he's exactly received all this accolades exactly so this is, so then is that does that discourage you because it seems as if hollywood is not still getting it even in the face of you know social media and, and the numbers i mean well i think that that is the key of what influencer means mm -hmm. you know tyler perry is an influencer lee dance is an influencer i hope to be an influencer because you it's it isn't people weren't checking for tyler perry until he showed them that there's an audience out there for this that it is going is willing to make you 40 50 million dollars um and so i think that that's the key about being an influencer you have to step out and push through um and, and change people's perceptions of the way they think things because people don't like to change they their thought about things they don't. they don't like to change the way they do things exactly. they like things to stay status quo and that's right. not that's everybody right um i mean i was talking about becoming a mac you know for yeah. many years i resisted 
and everyone in my industry has a Mac. Right. And I was like, no, I'm a PC Me be too. because uh, people like the status quo. They don't like a lot of change. Right. And as influencers, you have to um, show them right. that the, the change is better right. or show them that there is an audience for this. So I don't mind it um, because, you know, that yeah. gets more reward for me. So. Well, it says a lot about you then to be consistent. You have to be consistent in that message. I mean, to people like you who are influencers constantly do it again and again. Yes, I was in success with this movie, but now I've got to push through with the second one. So what do you get that? To, what, what drives you or what is influencing you to keep you going in the face of no's or nah, it's not going to work? Or, nah. I have a story to tell. Yeah. I have a, a voice that I think has a place in the broader scheme of entertainment and the world. Um, you know, if I have to define, if I had to define my brand, my brand is I want people to, I want to do projects and, and work that shows us that we are more similar than we are dissimilar. Mm -hmm. Because I think that people at the very core are fundamentally the same, okay. and that we let some of these, you know, kind of superficial mm -hmm. um, and exterior differences separate us from understanding our mutual humanity and. And, and so, for that reason, a no is not going to deter me from doing that because I really do have a voice that I think has a place in the greater, you know, community and the society and the world. Wonderful. Wow. And thank you for bringing your voice here and te teaching us how to have a voice as well. I mean, this has been great. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed myself. I really did. And hopefully it'll be, absolutely next year, you'll be back, right? Yes, yes. If they have me, I will come back. You will be back here. Okay. Okay, <laughs> thank great. you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. thank you.